Hi guys, Tech James here. In this video, I will show you guys how to install the Citra 3DS emulator onto your Android device. So as far as I know, this works on quite a lot of Android phones, um, pretty much the high powered ones. In this video, I will be showing you what it runs like on my LG G5, which is quite an old phone now. I'd say probably about three years old, maybe even four, I'm not too sure. Um, but obviously it's not going to run too well on my phone, just keep that in mind. Um, I do actually have the Razer phone, I wasn't able to get it for this video. Um, but I can show you guys some gameplay on the Razer phone, and we can see what that's like in another video. But anyway, this video is pretty much just focusing on the setup. So that is the first thing you will need. You will need a fairly decent Android phone. And once you have got that, you want to go to this link in the description. Now you can either go to this on your PC or on your Android device. The reason why I'm doing this on my PC is just because it's a bigger screen and it's just easier to explain to you guys. So what you want to do on this link is just click on this APK and it will begin downloading. Now once the APK has finished downloading, there's only one other thing you will need, and that is your 3DS ROMs. So your 3DS ROMs must be in the .3DS format, just like this one here, and they must be decrypted as well. So here I have um, Yoshi's New Island, which has been decrypted for the Citra emulator. Now if you're not sure how to decrypt your ROMs, um, check out my other tutorial on it that I uploaded like three days ago or something like that, and that will show you how to decrypt every single 3DS or CIA but um, this emulator only works with the 3DS version so make sure you have your game and the APK you can also have as many games as you want it's entirely up to you uh, keep in mind some run better than others you can actually play the Pokemon games it's just on my phone they just lag so bad so just get these two files your game and your APK right click copy them now I've got my phone plugged into my PC so here it is G5 so I'm just going to stick these in my downloads folder. So here's my download folder. I'm just going to go into this called files and I'm just going to paste them in here. So once the game and my 3DS ROM has copied across, I can now disconnect my Android phone from my PC and I will show you guys how to set up the emulator. Alright guys, so over on my Android phone, I'm just inside of ES File Explorer, but now I'm going to install the Citra APK file, so just tap on it, and now you can just tap on install. So let's just click on install, and then just give it a few seconds to um, finish installing. Now it shouldn't take too long, because it is a fairly lightweight app. So once it has finished, it will just come up saying app installed. You can now just tap on done or you can just tap on open if you wish to open it straight away. Alright guys, so I've actually just switched to the Razer phone. Um, on my LG G5, the app just kept on crashing again and again. It was working fine um, when I tested it earlier and then when I tried it, it just kept on crashing. So now we're going to test this out on the Razer phone. So I've already got the app installed, so I should be able to just bring it up here. Um, here it is right here, the Citra emulator. So let's just click allow. So now what we can do is just tap on the small icon down here and now we can find our game. So mine is in my download folder. So I'm just going to tap OK and now it's going to scan and find it. So here it is, um, Yoshi's New Island. Now there's actually some settings we can change. You can see them all at the top here. If you click on this one, you can change the settings like the CPU core, the dual core, you can enable stuff. Um, it even has GameCube slots on here and Wii remotes. So you can just click on save just to go back. Um, there's also a other settings thing where you can show FPS. I'll turn that on right now. There's also enhancements and hacks and stuff like that. There's also a controller one here. So you can tap on that. You can add a GameCube controller. And then there's also this one right here is just, I'm not actually sure because this one doesn't come up with anything when I tap it. And then there's also just a refresh, just to refresh the whole emulator. So first of all, let's just try games. So let's just tap on it and our game should launch up. Now while the game is launching up, we do actually want to sort the controls out before we do anything. So just tap on the screen. Then just tap on the three dots right here. Go to configure controls and then go to edit layout. Now what you can do is just drag everything. Um, so you want to drag them round about here. You know, just make it look like um, the kind of like a 3DS layout. This is probably going to be really hard to do. 
Um, I haven't actually got my 3DS to copy right now, but I'm just going to put them in random places um, so you guys, you know, can see what it looks like. Right, so that's the best I could do, and there's also a massive problem. I can't get to the start button. Um, it's just, oh, there you go, I just managed to move it. I was actually trying to get the start button, and it was completely stuck. So now let's test that emulator um, with my horrible controls. So I can just tap done once you've got the control sorted out, and now we can just tap on A to continue. So as you can see, it's even really laggy on the Razer phone. I didn't actually expect it to be this laggy. I thought it might be a bit better. As you can see, if I can move the D-pad a bit, I don't even think it it's working right now it might have even crashed but yeah look how slow this thing is or maybe it's speeding up now i'm not too sure if you look at the fps it does actually say it's on 54 fps um which i'm kind of doubting oh now it seems to be running a bit better so you guys can just see what this runs like obviously they're 3ds games you can't really expect it to run too well right now um especially since how early in development this emulator actually is so we're just going to try and play like a new game here or something like that. Let's just do a story mode. It actually seems to be running a bit better than it was on the intro screen. So maybe it was just setting up or something like that. So right now it's actually running very smooth. Um, around about 50 FPS which is actually kind of surprising. This is actually a cut screen. Uh, right now there isn't any gameplay. Um, but so far it's actually looking alright. I'm, I probably will test Pokemon Sun and Moon. I'll probably do another video for that. This video was pretty much just the setup. Um, but yeah, it's actually quite easy to set up. Also, if you click on the three dots, um, there's other stuff, screenshot, um, quick save, and then quick load, so you can load your saves, uh, save states, and load states on here as well. Obviously, you can figure your controls, we've done that. Um, toggle, this is basically turning the controls on and off. And then we've also got change disk. Um, this is based off Dolphin, if you didn't already know. Um, so it probably looks exactly like the Dolphin emulator. Um, so obviously change disk isn't really disk, it's more like change cartridge. So I've just encountered another problem. I have actually been trying to light up the game. Um, I can't even get into gameplay because the emulator just keeps on crashing. So here it is. You can see I'm on World 1. Um, you can see that the home screen one seems to work fine. So let's just press A um, to enter into World 1. Would you like to select this file? A for yes. And now we can do a story mode. And then it just exits out of the game like that. So I'm not sure why it's doing this. Um, anyway, I just can't get it to work. So I guess that's pretty much it for this video. This is how you set the emulator up anyway. And actually, you know, open up the games. Um, for me, I don't know why it keeps on crashing. So I will eventually do a gameplay video of this. I just need to work out why it keeps on crashing. Maybe it's a problem with the app or something like that. But um, yeah, I just intended this to be a setup video anyway. And I guess the game still done as, kind of does open. And you can obviously test this out on your device and see what it's like for you. So that's pretty much it for this video. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.